Hi there, it's Rick from the Cat Jewelry School and today we're going to look at applying an opal material in Maverick Studio and this question's been asked a few times so I'll show you a technique that you can add an image like a UV map or decal as some people like to call it but it's basically an image map that you can control the position and scale and rotation of that map and uh, let's get started. So rather than using the link from Rhino, I'm just going to come up to the file menu here and import this Rhino 3DM file. This is the file here. Uh, I'm going to open it as a new scene. You can take note of some of my options in here, the sliders. But I'm going to open it as a new scene because that will allow us to select a default ambience to apply here. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'll choose just one of the basic ones here. This is one that I commonly use. Click next. You'll get a preview. Uh, just make sure that you set up the scene to be small so up to 10 centimeters, 100 millimeters in size is fine and you can click proceed and that will import those objects with the default grouping now the latest update of Mavericks quite clever. Uh, we've got a layer called white gold in the uh, Rhino file, so it's applied sort of white gold material to that. So it's pretty neat. But these are going to be opals, so <laughs> let's have a look at this. Just zoom in here a bit. So what we'll do is we'll come here first, and we're going to create a new material. And there's a number of options for materials, but we're going to choose standard. So select standard from the materials list. And the first thing we want to do is here under the diffuse settings, okay, under color, we want to click here just to add our image map. Now here it's asking us for what type of image map we want to use. Now we want to use a file texture here. So click File Text and click OK. And once that's set up, uh, what we can do is come in here and select the file name that we want to use. So click there and then select the image map that you want to use. So I'll ch choose this first one here. And what I've got is just a sort of uh, cropped rectangular sort of shape of a, an opal. So these are uh, images of an opal that have been cropped into a square or rectangular format. Click open. And if we, let's just while we're here, we'll rename this material so we can do that over here. We'll call it Opal 001. If you click render swatch, it will render out that image to your uh, swatch as well and we can then apply that and drag it on top. Now a few things so you'll notice that because of the UV mapping by default that's in the uh, Rhino file that came across from the Rhino file we've got a fairly flat surface at the top we've got a fillet around and you know we've got the bottom section where the fillet ends. Now we can solve this mapping and we do that here under UV mapping and by default the projection is using the objects UVs okay so you can come in here and change that to triplanar you'll find immediately that gives you a much better result and what you can also do is blend the the margins where these edges these hard edges appear you can do that by adjusting this blend so when it's at zero you'll see it's quite a harsh edge if you move that up and increase that, you'll see it will start to blend in and smooth out the uh, the intersection or where the edge occurs. Now, the first thing is that our image map is the scale is too big. So you can see here under UV mapping, okay, here under real size in centimeters, it's set to 10 centimeters. So if I was to drop that down, say, to maybe 1.5 centimeters, so that's 15 mil. You'll see that uh, appears, you know, much, much better. Now, let's um, 
add a coating here. In fact, before we do that, I just want to explain something else here. We can actually adjust the position and rotation of this UV map so we can better position it on our stone. Uh, we can change its scale and things like that. Now the way we do that is coming over to the objects menu and just make sure first you have that uh, stone selected or that object selected and if we come in here to modifiers this little sort of prism shape here if we click to create a modifier we can specify a modifier for UV mapping so this will give us control over the UV mapping on the selected object so we can position and as I say rotate and scale that UV map so click there and what you'll see is you've got quite a large uh, shape <laughs> that's made up um, that mapping but I can change its scale here so I can say fit to object although that's going to really shrink it down too much or I can set it to say that I want to scale it back to where I had it about 1.5 centimeters I'll do the same in some of these other boxes here 1.5 and I can leave the other one as it is that's fine uh, now what you've got is this sort of mapping box around your object now you can uh, switch that off I've got it showing in my viewport okay you can just disable that from showing but the important thing is if I select my object and um, or in fact sorry come come to my modifier again my UV map modifier although I can't see it displaying in my viewport here if I come over to the move tool I can reposition that box let me just move this out of the way and using the gumballs here you can see that I can drag my mapping to a new position if I want and I can also rotate it around as I say to get that uh, aligned a little bit better for my gemstone so I guess it just depends uh, what you want to do <laughs> how you want that to look but that will give you a little bit more flexibility with that once you're happy you can just click accept to accept that so just when you come in to apply that mapping make sure you come into the UV mapping and if you want to show that in the viewport you can click this little slider to show that okay uh, and, and you can still come in and adjust as I say the, anything any of the controls in here let me just hide that from the viewport and click accept to accept that now one other thing we'll do is just add a bit of sheen to this uh, so that it looks like it's polished okay so we can simply do that by selecting the opal material here and if we come into coating here we can come in to increase the weight of that and you'll see you start getting some reflections and uh, a little bit of gloss or shine to that Can increase that a bit more the other thing that probably will help is this thin film coating it will make it uh, a little a little more realistic I think okay so that's one example let's just quickly create a different one on the one next to it so let's just quickly follow those steps again so we're going to create a new material we're going to create a standard material here Let's, while we're here, call this Opal 002. We're going to come into the Diffuse Color, OK, and click here to add a file texture. And click OK. And here, under the file name, we're going to select a different image. So we'll use this one. I'll use this one, Black Opal 04, and click Open. Now, I'll click back onto that material, Opal 02. I'm going to create a render swatch just so I don't get confused with what material I've got here. If I now drag and drop that onto my other object and select it as the target, you'll see we have the same issue with the image mapping. So if we come into UV mapping, 
we're not going to use objects UVs we're going to use try planner again we'll increase this blend a bit we might not need as much on this one but what we certainly need to do again is scale this so let's try uh, two centimeters here doesn't look too bad and again if we want to play around with the positioning and rotation and scale of that image map we just simply uh, select that uh, second stone we come in over here to create a modifier for that and the modifier we want is for UV mapping again we'll set the scale here because it resets to 10 and let's fit it to object actually oh that doesn't look too bad maybe in this direction it's a bit wonky I'll set that to 8, 6 I don't want to show the viewport gizmo in my rendered tab here in my display so but I do want to rotate and maybe move its position a little bit so again I can come in here using the move tool and once again I can drag the image map to position I can rotate it and set that to where I want it probably was better the other way around so you can see the scale there's an overlap happening here because of the image scale so I can either move that to a better location if I find my scale still out I can obviously change the scale here so you can slowly increase that uh, I can see my blend needs to be increased here and I'll just hit accept And the last thing to do is just set up that uh, reflective coating a little bit. So we'll come into the material again. Let me uh, just close these and open up coating. Under coating, if we increase the weight, we'll get more reflection happening. Uh, and you can set that to thin film. You can experiment with that, I guess, see what yields you the best result. And that's it. So that's a simple technique for adding an image map to an object. Uh, in this case, we're using an opal type texture. Now, just remember that you can always save your materials to your library. So if you've got a material that you've created like this and you want to access that in future, uh, you can save it to your library. So you can click Pack Materials to Library. So if we select both those materials here, I'm holding my shift key to make sure both are selected, and I click pack materials to library, I'll just say yes here. So you can see the materials are saved in my library slash shading slash materials slash scene folder. So you can move them from that folder of course later on, but if I come just to my default library of materials here in Maverick Render and I have a look at oh it might be under my materials yeah there they are here and here oh, the image mappings again out because it was different on that particular object reset that all right as I say I hope that gives you an overview of uh, adding UV maps particularly for uh, colored stones like opal uh, turquoise and things like that all right bye for now